thing I noticed, I was looking at the photograph of that cardinal in Mexico City who made those comments that it would be treasonous to help build the wall. I can tell you one thing. His corpulence, is uh, his fellow looks like he hasn't missed many meals. I'm sure that he's also looking out to make sure that his flock is well fed while he's gorging himself at the dinner table. Looks like the weather, which I had said yesterday, we might see a few snow flurries some nights this week. It, maybe not. Uh, but it's still going to be chilly in the overnights. And for that reason, if you are still having to kick on that furnace and it's gotten a little bit of the overuse this winter, it, it might not be at its most efficient. And I've been recommending that people get in touch with the good folks at Ramsey Heating and Electric. I'll point out that they'll come out, they'll get the job done, they'll get it done right, and they'll get it done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. You can telephone them at 678-0459, Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. Liberals believe that we can knock down our borders and bring the whole world here and feed them, and then they say, but it's the right thing to do. Well, how are we going to accomplish that? You don't believe in God, so since you don't believe in God, you don't believe there's going to be divine intervention in helping us feed all of these people. So then they'll say, no, we're going to take it from somebody who doesn't deserve it and give it to the poor. All right, well, you look around the world at the super rich. The super rich control governments because they can provide the government's with the where they can overthrow governments they don't like, and they do it frequently. That's history, and it goes back millennia. The super rich are able to, you know, to, to feed people and say, "All right, uh, I will make you a vassal if you go out and uh, and you kill my enemies." They don't have to comply. This is the way of the world and humanity. And if you're a Christian, your Savior said that, and your Savior said, "Don't expect a reward here." It comes in the afterlife. And the people out there, these utopians who don't even believe in God in the first place, are trying to tell the rest of us this is how it works. 736-0300, the number to reach our show today. 736-0300. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Caller, you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. Morning. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, kings and everything else a minute ago. Well, God at one time ruled the nation of Israel. He gave them the rules and everything else. They decided that they wanted to be like all the other nations and have a king. So God, if I remember the scriptures right, told them the drawbacks of having a king. But they still wanted a king, so they Saul was the man chosen to be the king. And after Saul came David. But that brought about the problem of uh, subjection and doing things, and it's created the whole mess because the people wouldn't listen, and they had to have their own way. Thank you. Thanks much for the telephone call. I and and yet yeah, again, liberals who are telling us we're going to have this. Well, they've seen too many Star Trek reruns, but they tell us we're going to have this perfect world. I remember watching a Star Trek episode where they revived these people who were cryogenically frozen. And, and these people are all interested in their investments uh, from a few centuries before, and they're uh, interested in watching television and doing all the things they used to do. And uh, the ship's consular explains, well, in this century, we don't need those things anymore. Everyone has their needs met. And liberals think that that's how it's actually going to be. It's a TV show, folks. They ignore religious faith, and they put their faith in some fictional utopian view of what the future will look like with all of their favorite actors and actresses. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it just it boggles the mind that they can't live in the real world. They, 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 they tell you that your religious faith is fictional, and then they turn around and live in a fiction of their own. They just replaced it with something else. I, 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 look, it's a cruel world. There are things that I've wanted in life I just simply can't have. And loved ones have died young and died horribly and in pain. I've seen this happen over, and all of you have seen the same thing. And you realize, and I would not want to be one of those terribly poor people trying to eke out a, you know, dig up some roots to eat in some third world country. 
and I'm blessed that I'm not not in that situation, albeit in an Old Testament sense, uh, they're blessed as well because they will be rewarded in the afterlife if you believe in that. But it just it, it boggles my mind that, uh, that you've got liberals out there who continually say we're going to have free health care and we're going to have free food and we're going to have, uh, and the list goes on and on and on, and don't worry, you can always have this. We'll just take it from somebody else. Again, the country is $20 trillion in debt, and in 30 years will be nearly $100 trillion in debt, and probably much more. Government is making a projection, and tell me the last time government was right when it made one of those projections. 20 minutes away from 10 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. Think about those college students out there that were surveyed, and half of them believe they won't have to pay off their debt because they think someone else will. So they all go down to spring break and party and blow their student loans on booze. And (laughs) I know, I know, (laughs) this is the future. We've got more on the way in just a few minutes. Remember what happened to all those people who said, Noah, Noah, don't do any more? Right, right, sure. One of those breaks, uh, just long enough to clear my throat. throat) Oh, no, I was doing it off air. I didn't realize the microphone was on. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I, uh, this is always one of those days where I don't know. Um, when you're working on losing weight, and if you've ever been on a diet before, you know that there are moments where you go, wow, look what I've done. And then there are moments where it's like, mm, I need to do more. But I have one of my, uh, my, uh, Updates. I do this on about a monthly basis. I get an update on weight loss and the like. But I could tell today. Sometimes you don't always even tell it in your your actual pounds on the scale, but you can tell when you put clothes on. And I put on a pair of pants today, and they're bundled up around my waist. And this is the second day in a row I've noticed this. So a lot of times you can have my initial rapid weight loss was probably all in my face, and then it works down your body. And I'm starting to feel it now in my waist, which is where I'd really like to, to, to see it go away because, you know, from a side view, I don't want to continue looking like a big pear as I walk down the street. So I'm pleased that I'm starting to see some of that change now in the clothes that I'm wearing. And uh, that's a good sign. And I've been able to do this because of the total body transformation system, which is not a fad diet. It is scientifically proven by some of the leading scientific researchers in America who look into this sort of thing. It's not a dangerous diet. It's a healthy way to lose weight. It was developed by a company that's been in business now over 20 years with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. And in fact, this is a company that has patented much of its weight loss system. It's proven to burn six times more fat, and you'll lose eight times more weight than normal results from diet and exercise alone. The meal replacement plan costs about the same as the meals that you're replacing. At least for me, I I haven't noticed any difference. I think it's almost identical. Healthier than many of the meals you're already eating, and you can still have a healthy amount of calories every day. The average participant will lose 4 inches off their waist and 22 pounds in just 60 days. And I wanted to point out, too, as well, it comes with a full, unconditional money-back guarantee. If you'd like to know more, contact marketing executive Don Chandler. He's right here in Twin Falls. His telephone number, 208-731-3560. Don's also a customer who lost over 50 pounds himself. Uh, Don is at 731-3560. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We were talking about people who come to this country illegally, and liberals just think, ah, you know, we don't want to. It'd be mean if we told them to leave. So we're going to have a sanctuary city. Funny, if you got a group of guys who occupy the Malheur Wildlife Refuge, they're considered to be lawbreakers, and liberals said they should have been shot dead on the scene. In fact, one of them ended up getting shot dead. But some laws are okay to violate if you're a liberal, and that would be the creation of a sanctuary city. Jeff Sessions, Attorney General of the United States, yesterday laid down the law. In a single week, uh, there were more than 200 instances of jurisdictions refusing to honor ICE detainer requests with respect to individuals charged or convicted of a serious crime. These, the charges and convictions against these aliens 
include drug trafficking, hit and run, rape, sex offenses against a child, and even murder. Such policies cannot continue. They make our nation less safe by putting dangerous criminals back on the streets. Today, I'm urging states and local jurisdictions to comply with these federal laws, including 8 U.S.C. Section 1373. Moreover, the Department of Justice will require that jurisdictions seeking or applying for Department of Justice grants to certify compliance with 1373 as a condition of receiving those awards. I suppose they'll go to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals will tell them they're entitled to the money, even though they're in violation of federal law. Is that, is that the next step in all of this? The lawlessness continues on the American left. And the left doesn't really care that somebody else's little girl got raped in a school bathroom in Maryland. It wasn't their little girl. And who, who's going to come, you know, scrub their toilets and, and clean their pools for a dollar a day if we, we actually get tough on these, uh, these situations? Good for them. It's like the people in Congress who, uh, who think that, you know, hey, I pretty much feathered my own nest. These people are the same way. Hey, cheap labor, wonderful for me. I don't care that, you know, your daughter gets killed while she's standing on a pier or that your daughter gets raped while she's in a bathroom. Huh. You are probably white trash anyway. After all, you have to work for a living and I don't. And that seems to be lefties. I won't call it a conundrum because lefty doesn't think about it. Lefty's hypocrisy in all of this. And I was listening to that and I thought, they call us bigots and racists because we won't go along with them. When I was a little boy, there was a saying that was very common in the neighborhood. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Oh, liberals, of course, say, oh, words have meaning and words can be dangerous. And therefore, if you say words we don't like, we're going to cut your tongue out uh, in violation of the First Amendment. But that way you won't hurt my feelings the next time you call me names. But they can call us all the names they want because they think they're right. You're evil because you don't agree with them. So therefore, you must be silenced. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if there's a corollary to all of this, when it comes to what Sessions was just talking about, it would be this. And let them call you names. Let them call you racist bigot. And maybe more politicians should take this to light and just change the words from that old childhood saying around to this. Illegal immigrants may kill or rape you, but names will never hurt me. You can call, you can blacken my name because I don't support the free ride you want to give to all of these people. You can call me names because I don't want to import everybody else's problems to the, to the United States of America. However, call me any name you want, but when it comes right down to it, if I save somebody's daughter from being raped in a school bathroom or being shot dead while they're strolling on a pier, call me any name you like. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Telephone number to reach our program today, 736 0300. 736 0300. I, I, I just will say this about Jeff Sessions. He got behind Donald Trump early because Trump pledged that he would bring an end to all of this. Trump is getting a lot of resistance, and there's a lot of things I don't like about Donald Trump. Don't threaten the House Freedom Caucus, number one. However, I will say this. He at least has kept his promises to move forward on building a wall. We'll see if Congress actually... They'll, they'll all come out and say, yeah, yeah, great idea, Donald. Uh, but, you know, the Freedom Caucus over there got in the way again, and so... Nope, 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 we can't do it. And by the way, i got a couple of these illegals working over at my house. Oh, strike that comment from the public record. Speaking of a related story to that, this comes out of North Dakota. North Dakota has been one of the ground zeros for refugee resettlement in this country. There has been a spike in crime in that state's largest city, Fargo. And according to a writer, Rob Port, who is the author of the Say Anything blog out of North Dakota, he said they don't get enough details on this. And he was mentioning that a liberal columnist in his state is blaming the spike in crime with no evidence, but claims the spike in crime is now because they've had a cutback. They've dialed back 
some of the oil exploration in that state, the fracking that was going on in the Bakken Shale. So a lot of men who came and moved to North Dakota, and they were actually, Fargo's in the east. This is where the liberal columnist is. He claims that those men lost their jobs out in the oil patch in the western part of the state, and then all apparently got in their trucks, drove over to Fargo, and started committing crimes. Why they didn't just commit the crimes where they were in western North Dakota, which doesn't have any spike in crime, but why they didn't go back to their home states and commit crimes there. Apparently, going to Fargo in the dead of winter, hmm, it's 40 below over there. I think I'll go there to spend the winter and commit crimes. I don't know. I'd go to Florida. If I'm going to commit a crime, I'd go to Florida and do it. At least it's going to be warmer when they put you in jail. But with no evidence, this guy claims it's, it's all of these unemployed oil workers who are breaking the laws now and not the new refugees who are be, being resettled in Fargo. And in fact, he says he went to talk to the police chief of Fargo about who was committing all of the crimes, and the chief said, he said, they don't record a person's country of origin. They don't specifically track who commits the crimes by where they're from or their ethnicity. Well, then how can you even claim it's unemployed oil workers? And Rob Port, the writer of this blog, says today, This lack of hard data has been the frustration of many, including observers such as myself, who are not at all against refugee resettlement. It's all the more frustrating, given how bitterly the political left in our state has fought any attempt to fill in the information gaps. In other words, if you did detail who's committing the crimes, you might discover it's not unemployed oil workers, but indeed it could be Muhammad Abdul and some of their relatives. They don't want you to know that. Because if if you did know it, it might actually give you ammunition to say, hey, we need to better vet these people and have a pause in some of these refugees coming from elsewhere. As our caller said in the last hour, we can't employ everybody we currently have in this country. Why are we bringing people here not only illegally but legally to live here? Hello? Because all you're doing is depressing the wages for the... Idaho has some great jobless figures. But even Maxine Bell, who some people tell me is much more of an establishment Republican than, a, than what you'd call a, a, a Republican who's actually looking to solve problems, she came out and said it in this studio last summer. She said, yeah, we have a lot of job growth here, but wouldn't it be nice if these jobs actually paid some higher wages? then stop depressing wages by bringing people here from all over the world. That's not her fault. She was being very upfront about that. Give her credit for it. But we've got a lot of people in this system. They cloak themselves and saying, oh, but it's, uh, we want to be compassionate, and I want to make sure that they say nice things about me in newspaper editorials. So therefore, we need to have people coming here. After all, we're a nation of immigrants. I was on a boat one time sailing with some friends, and uh, the boat started to take on water. Luckily, we were enough, uh, luckily, we got it back to shore uh, and were able to then bail it out, and somebody was later able to replace it. But think about the United States as a boat. The United States is a boat, and it has a capacity. When you, when you exceed that capacity, that boat sinks. Now, if you're, and this, this, this is a dilemma, and I'm saying it's not necessarily easy to do, but if you're out on your boat and your boat has a capacity, it's a, call it a pontoon boat. It's got a capacity of 24. And if you're in deep water and you know that if you get to 30 or 36, you're likely going to sink the boat and everybody drowns. While you're out there, you see another boat going down. You do your best to try to tether some of those people and you know drag them along in the water so you can get back to shore. But if you actually pulled them all onto your boat and you sank your boat too, then everybody's going to drown. I do realize from a moral standpoint that's not easy to do, but you've got to start considering the people here in your own country who are already on an overloaded boat, and many of them are just barely able to keep their heads above water. And yet Lefty says, yeah, but you know, Lefty, again, is lying through his teeth. He just wants cheap labor here. Look at the way they mock people in flyover country already. They claim you're all meth addicts. They claim you're all heroin addicts. They claim if you don't like where you live, then you should go move to San Francisco. Find a job working in Palo Alto. 
uh, and, and, and get a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year as a computer programmer and then hang around and sip Cabernet. And gosh, gee willikers, it's your own dang fault because you're a dumb, dumb, dummy that you haven't done that. 954. Bill Colley on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Look, I want to leave everybody on a bright note. I had an old woman tell me one time, I met her at a remote broadcast I was doing several years ago. And she said, oh, I wanted to drop by. She said, you came to my church one time and you sat right behind me. And I said, oh, that's nice to know. And she said, I also want to tell you, you're very depressing on air. <laughs> I guess you're supposed to say, yeah, eliminate the borders. Bring everybody here. We'll have a big party. Uh, we'll have pizza and we'll have Pepsi and then we'll have cake and ice cream afterward. And the government will pay for it. That would have made her feel better. So I do want to leave you on a high note today. No, and Canada's talking about legalizing uh, marijuana. Uh, that We're not talking about that type of high note, no. Well, you know, Trudeau apparently smokes a lot of the ganja. Well, that's why he thinks the way he does. I have this from the Wall Street Journal today, the opinion commentary section. Mark Mills, who's a researcher in energy issues at the Manhattan Institute. Only a few years ago, America's policymakers were wringing their hands about peak oil and dependence on imported fuels. Now headlines feature the return of oil gluts. This year, the U.S. is not only filling storage tanks to the brim, but also exporting more than a million barrels of crude oil a day. Exports are at the highest level in American history, twice the previous crude export peak, which, get this, was 59 years ago. Little noticed outside the petroleum industry, shale technologies are getting better. The productivity, and this actually means that people will be going back to work in North Dakota, Output per shale drilling rig has been rising by more than 20% a year. That means every three and a half years, the average rig produces twice as much oil or gas. No other energy technology of any kind is improving at that rate. Put another way, the cost to produce shale oil keeps falling. And they haven't even brought in computerization to this to help with the efficiencies. The industry is mainly still small producers. People out there who were drilling, a lot of them were wildcatters. When they start applying, uh, applying computer technology to all of this and what they're doing on a regular basis, the uh, productivity, the efficiency will only skyrocket some more. He says, for the Saudi Arabians and the other oil-rich uh, oil countries around the world, the worrisome feature of Shale 2.0, as he calls it, is that software enhances the most remarkable feature of Shale production, velocity. The thousands of small to mid-sized Shale operators and investors make rapid individual decisions each involving a tiny fraction of capital per decision compared with the super majors. This fluid, chaotic, very American environment operates in private markets, largely on private land, and can expand or pull back with a volume and velocity unseen in oil markets in a century. In other words, if there's a silver lining in anything that we're doing, and all the naysayers will keep saying, no, oh, we need to have more whirly gigs, giant pinwheels out there. We need to cap all of those wells for good so that we can save Mother Earth. I'm looking to save my countrymen. And one way we're going to do that is by becoming the world leader in energy production. I don't care if it's soybeans turned into energy. I don't care if it's oil. I don't care if it's natural gas. I don't care if we all just break wind all at one time. This country could, could start turning around a lot of what, what really has been well, what the sickness that we've dealt with for decades by getting a handle on all of this, Sarah Palin was mocked for saying, drill, baby, drill, and she was spot on. God willing, if the creek don't rise, they'll allow me to come back and do this all over again tomorrow morning here at News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Rush Limbaugh will follow the news at uh, 10 o'clock from Fox. Sean Hannity following news at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Glenn Beck at 4, and tonight at 7 o'clock, Dave Ramsey. All of that ahead on KLIX.